In this video, we will look at the buttons within the function group and how to use them. This collection of buttons includes all the common till functions that can be applied to a transaction. We will now explain what each one is and how to use them. You will notice that when selecting a product from the browser, only the applicable function group buttons are enabled. If a button is disabled that you want to use, you must first finish or cancel the current operation. The void item button is used for removing products from a transaction that have been added accidentally or for items the customer no longer wants to purchase. To void an item, you must first have at least one item in the transaction. Voiding an item can be done in one of two ways. You can select an item from the journal and tap the void item button, followed by the void confirmation. Alternatively, you can first tap the void button, followed by scanning or tapping an item from the journal, then tap the void confirmation. Both methods will achieve the same thing. After carrying out a void, the item will update in the journal and will change to red. Cancel sale is used for cancelling the entire transaction when a customer no longer wants to carry out the purchase. To do this, simply tap the cancel sale button, followed by the cancel sale confirmation. Once a sale has been cancelled, it cannot be recovered. No sale is used to open the cash drawer without recording a sale. This is typically used when needing to make change. To open the cash drawer, just tap the no sale button. This can only be done outside of a transaction, meaning there are no items in the journal. The no sell feature should not be used when taking money out of or adding money to the cash drawer. We have separate paid in and paid out features for these scenarios. Print feed is for providing some blank receipt paper and typically used for taking notes and after changing the till roll. You can print feed at any time by tapping the print feed button. If more paper is required, simply tap the print feed button again. RF is the refund button, used to refund individual items or whole transactions. To refund a single item during a transaction, first tap the RF button and then add the product to be refunded. This could be from the browser, product lookup or by scanning its barcode. The product will then appear in the journal in red with a negative price and the subtotal will reduce by the same amount. If the customer is owed money at the end of the transaction, the refund amount will be displayed in the transaction summary. You can also look up and refund previous transactions. In an empty transaction, tap the RF button and the transaction lookup window will appear. From here, you can search for a transaction based on its transaction ID. This is displayed on every customer receipt. Once you have identified the transaction, you can either refund the whole transaction or specific items. To issue a refund for an entire transaction, tap the full button. This will load all the items that was in the transaction and automatically apply the refund to each item. It is then just a case of tapping cash or card to complete the refund. We will now repeat the process to show how to complete a partial refund where we will choose specific items to refund. This time we will tap the partial button on the desired transaction. This will then display a copy of the journal from that transaction. Simply tap the items on the screen to be refunded followed by the refund button. This will again add the items to be refunded to the transaction automatically. Complete the refund as we did before by tapping cash or card. Disc is the discount button, where we can set either individual item discounts, transaction discounts, as well as pre-configured discounts such as staff discount. To add a discount to specific items, you must first select the item in the journal. This can be an item on its own or multiple items. After selecting the items, tap the disc button. This will then display the discount selection window where we choose which discount to apply. The discount window will only allow specific discounts based on what has been selected. For example, if you select two items at different prices, the monetary item discount is disabled, but the percentage discount is enabled. Tap the desired discount. In this case, we will choose the item percentage discount. We are now prompted in the display window to enter the discount amount and only the keypad is enabled. Use the keypad to enter the discount amount and tap enter. Tap the discount confirmation message to confirm the action. You will see the discounted items are marked orange in the journal and detail the discount amount, discount value and new line total. Monetary discounts operate in the same way but will discount a monetary value rather than a percentage. You can change any discount that has been applied by selecting the discounted items in the journal and repeating the process. 
if you want to remove a discount, either select Remove Discount from the Discount selection or enter a discount value of zero. You can also apply a discount to an entire transaction. After you have added all your items, tap the Disc button with no items selected in the journal. We will see in the Discount Selection window that the discounts listed are for the transaction rather than items. Like we did before, select a discount to apply and enter the amount if prompted. In this example, we will give the customer a £5 discount. Once you apply a transaction discount, you cannot make any other changes to the transaction. You would first need to remove the discount, make the changes and reapply the original discount. Price override is used to manually change an item price in the current transaction. You would typically do this if the price is incorrect on the system or you are reducing the price due to damaged packaging as an example. To override the price, you must first add an item to the transaction. Like void, price overrides can be done in two ways. You can select an item from the journal and tap the price override button, then enter the new price on the keypad, tap enter and confirm the new price. Alternatively, you can first tap the price override button, followed by tapping an item from the journal. Entering the new price on the keypad, tap enter to confirm the new price. Both methods will achieve the same thing. After carrying out a price override, the item will update in the journal and display in orange, and show both the original and new price. You can configure in the web portal if you want the original price displayed on the item receipt. Dept is the manual department entry button. This is used when you want to record a sale against a department rather than an item. This is typically done if you have not yet loaded all your products onto the system, or you have new products not on the system. It is in fact how most people tend to use electronic cash registers. To record a sale against a department, you must first tap the Dept button then enter either the department name using the keyboard or enter the department code using the keypad. We will enter the code 106 which denotes toys in this example. Once a valid department has been entered, you are then prompted to enter the price using the keypad, in this case 999, followed by enter. The prod button is used to access the product lookup feature. This allows you to quickly search for a product, see its price and stock availability and add it to the current transaction. This is typically used for price checking as well as adding items that will not scan due to damaged barcodes. To carry out a product lookup, you must first tap the prod button. You can then search for an item either by scanning a barcode or by entering text. The text will search against the barcode, SKU and product name. In this example, we will search for all products that contain Disney in the name. After tapping search, the results will be displayed in the table below. Matching products will display their product name, stock quantity for this store, as well as price. You can now either close the product lookup button or add the desired product to the transaction by tapping the add item button. Finally, we have the QTY button, which is short for quantity. This is used to either pre-enter an item's quantity before adding it to the transaction or for adjusting the quantity of an item already in the transaction. To pre-enter an item quantity, you must first tap the QTY button. You will be prompted to enter the quantity using the keypad. In this case, we will enter a quantity of 5, then tap enter to confirm. Now we can add a product using any method. The journal will display the line item in black with its unit price, followed by the quantity and the line total price. To adjust the quantity of an item that is already in the transaction, you must first tap an item in the journal, then tap the QTY button. Once again, we are prompted to enter the quantity using the keypad and tap the enter button to confirm the new quantity. All the features seen within the function group can be controlled via the web portal through feature permissions. These will be explained in another video, but in brief, functions can be configured to all users like we have just seen. Supervisors only, where the specific feature is disabled for standard staff, but available when a supervisor logs in. Supervisor approval, where a standard user can access the feature, but a supervisor will be prompted to enter their PIN to confirm the action. And fully disabled, where the feature is unavailable to all users. Here is a quick example of the price override feature configured to supervisor approval. Everything is as we have seen before, but when we confirm the change, we are prompted for a supervisor to enter their PIN to approve the action. Further information on the function group and all the features can be found in your user manual. 
If you still have any questions, please get in touch with your solution provider who will be able to offer further assistance.